Yeah, got some early game bosses from the looks of it. Three Tibia Mariners, three Urtree Avatars can be done relatively quickly. We got some collection. We got the Bogart Square, which is something that people... Oh, and the Raya Hand Synergy. This is a super strong play. And even in the same diagonal. Wait, that diagonal is actually... Cra okay, it is almost crazy if it wasn't for the Glove Bell Bearing 2, which is really slow in mountaintops. But other than that, yeah, the Raya into Bogart play is super strong. You can get that... You can work on that and then actually move Bogart up there. Uh, Margaret Perry's another really quick one. Catacombs. Um, we got a stat dump square. Again, uh, four bosses with the word God in it on the board as well. That seems to be a very popular square this season. It just keeps showing up. Uh, there is four different remembrances, which I was talking about before. Do we have gargoyles oh. as well? Pausing. And sadly, no. No gargoyles. Domo, Domo, look, look. Row five. Do you see it? Ah, yes, the Restore Guard Rodan's Great Rune and Godskin Apostle combo. Maybe it's happening. Well, it, it, it could. It definitely could. I wouldn't be surprised, honestly, if if they consider it. Yeah, I was in Morgul Great, great Restoration. Uh, with the God Bosses, it's definitely something um, that hints towards a little bit more of a late game direction. I kind of hope that, uh, and also four different Remembrance, actually, lots of Remembrance synergies. Redan, Morgoth, needing those Remembrance for Capital Access in the first place. Um, could be interesting. Now, that being said, I think there is a lot of early game possible squares. There's the Sacred Flasks, there's the Sorceries, there's the du two Duelists, um, two Catacomb Dungeon combo, which is oftentimes something that is going to be contested. Sometimes people just go for that Watchdog Catacomb to at least win out on the Catacomb play first and then potentially go for the Duelists later, only picking up that first Merc Water Catacomb Duelist. Uh, so I kind of hope that they kind of go head ahead, uh, head to head. Um, in the early game, each hopefully gets some early game squares and forcing us into this more late game situation where it's probably going to be about Moog Sewers, more gods, uh, capital X's, god bosses, potentially that rare Radan Apostle play. Yeah, I mean, e even then, that the Radan Apostle play would also play into god bosses anyways. So, I mean, True. there there is definitely some some micro synergy going on here, which I think is really, really nice. Um, the classes here are looking like a morning star on the ADEF class, uh, with the, God, my eyes are kind of giving, oh, it's a crossbow. Got it. That wouldn't be a bad idea. And then the gargoyles blade though on Chris's class. So there is the, the gargoyles blade, honestly, the gargoyles blade, great sword is actually not bad. I used it the other Ooh. time, has a little bit of a faith requirement. I believe it's like 14 or so, but genuinely really not that bad actually uh it has some decent decent damage and i believe it's also a somber weapon no it's not sorry it's a smithing weapon but uh yeah. the the damage overall is very very nice there are so many synergies that i'm seeing right now we have the mimic tier consumable only kill which is going to be important if you're going for the radana apostle play but one thing that's actually even larger is the two catacomb dungeon two duelist spirit ash summon plus four play you can actually do all of that with one line. Going for the Kaled Catacomb and the Murkwater Catacomb, you can get all of the ingredients needed for the Ash Summon plus four. You can kill two duelists and two catacombs. I am assuming that that's not going to be something that the other team will allow the other team to do, but it would be an insane synergy. I do believe that at least one half of each team will try to work on that Bogard Raya diagonal play. Uh, just because it works so well into each other. You just go to Raya, you get her the uh, medallion, and then move Bogart over, get some money, and get those those crabs basically going. Yeah. And for anyone wondering, the, the 20 crabs is coming down to a good old $12,000. It's a lot of money for crabs, mm -hmm. but it's a nice little, uh, nice little money dump for anyone that is ready to prepare. Oh, sorry, ready to prepare. Ready to buy that many crabs from Bogart. Um, yeah, I, I believe that there's definitely going to be some con uh, jeez, what are the words today? There's going to be some contesting here for sure on multiple squares. I, I'm really excited to see which ones they pick though, because I, I don't really know. Like there's, there's just too many options to pick from, you know? Yeah, I think the two lines that are really strong, in my opinion, are the Catacomb Duelist Ash Summon play and the Raya Bogart play. That's kind of how I would split it up on the top of my head. Obviously, there is the potential for to doing something like Margaret Parries. But like I said, I think what you want to do here is you want to get some of these early game squares and then potentially look towards more of the late game uh, stuff that's still going on on this board. This actually, I like this board a lot just because it's so split. Like, it seems like around half is all about Remembrances, Morgoths, Redan, etc. Like, underground stuff. And the other half is early game Catacombs. Combs, 
um, and that sort of stuff. So it's going to be interesting to see. It looks like all of our players are mostly headed towards Torrent here. Chris will be picking up the Church of LA Grace, which makes me think he's going to be going for the Watchdog Catacomb. It looks like he might just go for the early two Catacomb play, which I kind of like. Because this denies any sort of crazy play where someone is trying to go for Duelist Catacombs and Spirit Summons. Just secure the Catacombs first, you already have one Duelist going for you, and then maybe work around that. I didn't realize that we're actually playing the uh, the, the weird modded version of Elden Ring, which is Mario, as everyone's just jumping across the fields <laughs> here really... and making their way towards the first grace. No uh, current contesting on any early squares until they get the uh, you know map unlocked with uh, Torrent. Interesting that Chris is going to this Grace now. Obviously, this is the faster way from this point to get Torrent. I would have almost expected him to go to the Grace these other players are picking to also combine his early Grace of Murkwater, and sorry, the Watchdog Catacomb, I always forget that name, and then into this Murkwater Catacomb. That's at least, I think, the play he's going to be going for. Uh, we'll see what our other three players are doing. We have some variants here in class. Um, like you said, Chris started with that Gargoyles Black Blade, but we have two Spiked Club players, and it looks like Adif is immediately heading over to Scenic Isle, gonna be working on the uh, Raya and Bogart line. We, meanwhile, Josh is riding towards Moyokwata Catacomb. He's gonna be contesting Chris potentially on that. But immediately, huge play from Chris to grab that Church of Valley play. Uh, Grace, um, that might end up being the advantage here, depending on how that, uh, that fight will go. It's gonna be a race between Chris and Josh. Uh, meanwhile, Bushy's grabbing the... Uh, oh, probably gonna be using the Storm Wall. Uh, here and probably work on market parries. Yep. Yeah, I could totally see that. Did grab that wet knife. I don't believe he checked the great sword chest though. He's going straight for the market parries. Uh, just booking it straight towards Stormville Castle here. As uh, yeah, as you said, Josh going. I believe for the uh, the black knife assassin. Well, that's I gonna be really interesting. Oh, no, 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 it is Murkwater. My bad, my bad. Yeah, they're, they're, they're both in Murkwater. Um, I don't know if Josh is going to be attempting to combine this with another Duelist Catacomb and go for that like super synergy play. If he tries to do that, Chris will deny it with the uh, Church of LA Grace. And he's picking up the Grave Glove for the intentionally. This makes me think that that's his idea. He might want to uh, go for that crazy combo. And I, I like, I respect it, right? But I feel like there was no way that that was going to be happening. And Chris is definitely going to try to deny it. Also picking up the Grave Glove word. So we'll see who's going to come out on top uh, when it comes to the actual upgrade. I am interested in the fact that the team Joe W. Bush is completely ignoring the Raya Bogart synergy, which is definitely something that has been considered really strong. The one thing to keep in mind is that's like the opposite of what we've talked about previously. Squares that also set you up in the meantime, this is like the opposite. You just lose money. Like, yes, you get two squares, but then you lose money. The only thing you get is like a little bit of map progression towards uh, the capital. Yeah, and I think that's what um, Bushy is potentially going to be more interested in getting those market oh! parries potentially early. Josh dying oh, here to the duelist, by the way. So this is now going to be working in Chris's favor here as he goes into the lead. I don't believe Josh even grabbed the grace, did he? Did this backfire too hard? No, he did grab the grace at the very least. Okay, so he's going to be able to get into this fight uh, right away after that death. Yeah, not too much damage coming out of the players here. Obviously, both on plus zero. Just kind of smacking the duelist here. Chris is going to have a huge advantage on this square. Uh, now, like we said, um, Bushy is going to be heading into that market fight. And I think his entire game plan is already kind of, at least to me, what I'm thinking is his gameplay is probably going to revolve around maybe making his way to Godric. Start to work on those god bosses, remembrances, capital type plays, and have Josh work on the early game stuff, like the catacombs, like the spirit summons, etc. And this uh, will be interesting to see, uh, because yes, Adif is most likely going to be getting Raya and Bogart here, getting two squares on the board. Can team positive vibes, because they're both doing some sort of early game plays here, can they get enough squares early to secure the win? Because if they don't, and Bushy is actually progressing towards capital, remembrances, etc. It's going to be hard to contest him on that sort of stuff later. But it's obviously very early into the match, and Chris is now entering the second catacomb. Yep, and there is the first square already on the bow uh, on the board for Team Positive Vibes here, uh, grabbing Raya's hand on the bottom left corner. Going to be possibly claiming their second square here in just a moment here for the Stormfoot Catacombs, while uh, Bushy here is going uh, to Parry Town with that Stormwall Ash of War, way better than those medium parries we saw yesterday. Oh yeah, this is looking much better. Getting those reposts in while uh, parrying as well. Now, Adef is actually choosing to go 
um, into the healing tree, which makes sense because he does need that 12,000, like you said, yeah. to be able to actually buy those crabs. I, I think it might be faster to grab some other runes just to get that square, but this is a much more efficient play because not only are you going to be getting that hero's rune, but you're also going to be getting Somber Stones. It, we'll see if he goes for the Smithing Stones or just for the hero's rune. I like getting the Somber Stone here regardless because you might want to get a weapon online at some point. Uh, because I feel like now that he's marked that square, he kind of has so much priority on the Bogart play that it would be weird to see somebody else just go for that. Like, you would literally lose 12,000 for a single square while doing nothing. I feel like he isn't really threatened now on this Bogart square, but I don't know how he thinks about it. Yeah, I'm not too sure, but sadly, Josh here did die a second time to the Duelist here. Still on the Duelist fight. There is six market parries, though. Nice diagonal block from Bushy grabbing that top right square on the board, going straight into Stormvale Castle, possibly grabbing the Grace, maybe checking Gostock real quick, maybe killing him to get the Bell Bearing. Uh, that wouldn't be a bad idea as well. Would be a nice little weapon check, as Chris is currently on his uh, second Catacomb on his first Watchdog. Uh, this would be a nice square now to block row one from Team Joe W. Bush. Yeah, that being said, um, they are also kind of setting up Column four here a little bit. Adif is going to be getting that by boy, uh, the 20 boiled crab square. Four remembrance is obviously very far away from now, but Chris has also already completed eight limgrave bosses. So if he's actually able to maybe set up a threat there by getting more limgrave bosses and one of the faster Godskin Apostles, which once again works towards that God square, suddenly that can be a real threat. And that's the sort of square that could be really fun to force your opponent to go for, right? Like if you grab every single square in column four, and your opponent is now in this weird guessing situation. Do I let them have it and get, get like have the potential of them getting two extra points, or um, do I actually have to do four remembrances now, which is obviously a huge time investment most of the time? Yeah, it looks like that Josh is committing to those two catacombs though, rather than the two duelists. So he's going to be going for the cemetery shade now. Um, sorry, never mind. What am I talking about? Uh, just going for the cemetery shade here in weeping. Uh, grabbing that grace, maybe setting up for Urtree Avatars as that is currently on row three on the column one. Uh, just getting weeping ready and maybe moving into Sacred Flask plus seven uh, with the three tiers mm -hmm. being in weeping uh, might be worth his time. But he's going for, seems to be completing this place for yeah, Sacred Shades. I was going to say maybe for the sun oh, upgrade, yeah. but that's not the right one to really go for then. He already has the Grave Glove word one. I think he might be noticing it in a second. Yeah, he literally, I think, okay, he picked up one and two. There is a catacomb in, in Leonia that has two, three, and four. It's the one relatively close to that ruined labyrinth. Um, I think he might be teleporting over there now. Okay, no, he just goes to the Kaled one now and picks up three and four in that other yep, yep. Kaled catacomb. It's a better grace to have as well as it's pretty close to Radan, which is probably going to be relevant this game. Yep, and Adif here ready at the Battlegrounds. Gray is going to be getting the Bogart 20 crabs in just a moment here. Already went to Halleck Tree, so already has that money uh, in his pocket. While Chris is going for this Deathbird in Limgrave. Um, he also do... picked up uh, Sunflowers on the way, so he's probably going to intend to eventually do Mimic Tier. Uh, no, he's going for the, uh, the, the nice little stagger uh, Holy Pots here on those Deathbirds. Once they stagger, those Holy Pots do a lot of damage. They really do a lot of damage because... But if uh, um, if a boss is staggered, they obviously take bonus damage. So the stagger into Holy Pots is so much damage that he's able to just like pretty much two shot that Deathbird after staggering with the uh, Gargolo's Greatsword, which is really really nice. Yeah, as we just saw, I confused the Sunflowers of the Altus Bloom, which I believe is what you need for those Lightning Pots later. Yeah, if the Fulgur Bloom. They're going to be doing. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, but yeah, that was insane. Uh, those hedges of the Holy Pots, one thousand four hundred damage or something, kind of going crazy. He's going to be able to rush these death birds really efficiently like this yeah so there it is third square now for team positive vibes on the board uh 20 boiled crabs the question is now what is adif going to do is he going to go for the sacred tears is he going to go for uh something else to maybe get a weapon online that wouldn't be a bad idea because he has committed a lot of his early game to not setting up and just really rushing squares back to back maybe it's time for him to you know kind of get his character online but we'll see in just a moment here i think he's actually going for sacred flask plus seven that is kind of his bread and butter um square he has really really good routing for that uh it looks like he might be leveling here as well um but he it has access he's a more map presence than anybody else currently on the board and should be able to get those uh sacred flask sevens really really quickly 
Going for 30 int stat dump square here for ADEF, putting in all of those Helic Tree runes into it, really getting him on the board 4 1 right now. Honestly, Josh going for those spirit summons really is making me think that their game plan is set in stone. Bushy is going to be working on more late game stuff, potentially remembering stuff. And Josh is, Josh is most likely going to be trying to get as many early game squares. Uh, as he can, because, yeah, Spirit Summon plus four isn't really going to do much for you later on, other than getting that one square on the board. We're looking at possibly another weapon check here from Chris on the Weeping Merchant. That could be a thing. Also going for the Deathbird, I believe, as well, on Limgrave here. Right. So not weapon checking at all, just going straight for that Deathbird uh, past the Ruins. Interesting. I wonder if he's planning on combining this with anything. Uh, I guess you get that grace there for another potential mimic tier option, just buying kukris. Uh, you can buy a lot of kukris there essentially infinitely later. But we do have that scenic isle grace unlocked, and technically that's a really fast death bird uh, to kill. Uh, that being said, this one is obviously a little bit less tanky. Uh, and here, by the way, Ada did claim that 30 intelligence square now. Uh, so he's really just taking the whole early game uh, approach for sure for his team. Uh, already grabbing uh, three squares, which is really, really nice for Team Positive Vibes here. Really creating a lot of presence on the board um, for him and his teammate, while Chris is really focusing on going for those Death Birds, activating that diagonal potentially for the Death Birds, Dragon Hearts, eight Limgrave Bosses, and Sacred Flasks. That's maybe the diagonal that they're really focusing on, as Adef can now just focus on Sacred Flasks and not really worry about his character. He's just going to go and collect things, let Chris do all the killing. I'm going to go do all the running around. I don't have to get a character online. I can just stat dump and go. And I think that's a really good game plan here. I agree. Bushy, though, is headed towards uh, Leonia. I don't know if he's going to be planning to become the Academy Key. There's an Erdry avatar around. He's kind of facing that way. Maybe just going to be getting some smithing stones. There is, although, um, there's also a Dragonheart boss on the way. I don't know how early they potentially see that threat of that diagonal and potentially worrying about this. I don't think Bushy's weapon is very high leveled, if at all. Um, because he just picked up those smithing tools, though. So might also be checking the uh, X chest here in the Temple Quarter, the originally Ice Rent Hatchet. Sometimes this can have something like Rose's X. Just has the Sacrificial X here this time around, so probably not going to be looking that in. Yeah, it looks like Chris might be checking the Greatsword chest here uh, just to see what other weapon options are out there. Uh, Spirit Ash plus 4 was claimed by Team Joe W. Bush now, so they do have two squares on the board. Uh, sadly, not really, like, getting rid of any of the threats that uh, Team Positive Vibes has really been creating. Um, and I, I wonder if they, yeah, I, I do agree. I wonder if they do see that diagonal. Uh, I, it's a little hard to see right now, I believe, especially in the middle of racing and trying to see if there's any options for your own team when it comes to uh, the board. Um, but like once the second square does get marked on that diagonal, I do believe they should be able to see uh, what they're possibly pushing for. Yeah, I think, um, I mean... Maybe Josh just picked him up no matter what, because he might be to headed towards the death, but as well. But he also just picked up a sacred tier, and that's definitely something that he knows very well too. The sacred flask routing. Currently, Adef is actually working on lightning ram. Is that even on the board? Nope, no, no, he might just he's the just doing tier. sacred tiers. Okay, okay, yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. And Chris here, by the way, did grab the alabaster's lord sword though from the gate front chest, which Ooh, is huge. That is one of big. the best weapons in the game. Uh, so that's going to be very, very big for him and his teammate. I don't even know if Bushy or uh, Josh know about that as Bushy was checking for, you know, other axe options. So they, Yeah, I doubt they, it. They definitely haven't checked Gatefront yet, and that would be a huge weapon for both. Looks like that Josh has the ringed finger, though, which is definitely a great weapon uh, as well, though. A very great hammer. Yeah, it's definitely very great. Um, it's quite fun to use. But yeah, the Alabaster Lord Sword is, is very, very, very... Uh, broken. It looks like Chris is going to be opening up the fog gate here, which is a nice strategy you can do. This will actually unlock the fog wall on the other side as well, so you can actually choose to potentially enter this cave through the Third Church of America, but because he doesn't have that grace yet, he will potentially actually go through the jail cave here. It's a pretty lengthy dungeon, and if you do already have that Third Church of America grace, it's faster, but in his case, it's not. So he's instead actually going to be running to the end here and fight the Frenzy Duelist, which is going to be a second Duelist boss. 
Yeah, should, there is a nice little skip here that you can do, though. We did see Bushy practice that a little bit where you jump on the cages and then you go ahead and you jump onto the wall. There's a very specific uh, ledge on the wall that you can kind of like uh, stick your feet onto and then jump onto the platform with the lever without having to go all the way around and pass the rats and pass the Volga Militia. You just jump up here on these cages where Chris is going and then jump up onto the ledge here and then jump across. Uh, he sadly missed it here, though, um, but then you can go ahead and just activate that lever right afterwards. Does get tagged in midair from that Volga Militia. These guys are not having it. Oh, it's frustrating. Just oh, nice. It. Just goes. gets it. It's frustrating to see uh, Bushy running around here, getting all of these weapon checks. He just checked the halberd. Uh, it was just a regular halberd. He checked that X. He somehow must have just forgotten about the greatsword chest, which is so fast to check. Looks like he is going to be teleporting there now. Potentially, no, still doesn't do that. It's really frustrating to see that there's literally one of the best weapons in the game, uh, basically waiting for them that Chris is currently using, while Bushy is still looking around for any weapon he could potentially use. I'm actually kind of confused by that. Uh, at the same time, we have both Chris and uh, Josh work on that sacred tier um, completion. Basically, the sacred flask plus seven. And Josh does have his unique tech, which he's currently doing, jumping down here from the Frenzy Flame Village, spawning back at Bellum Church. He's already been in Weeping, but I think Adef might have a small advantage here. Uh, yeah, um, this is going to be interesting because, uh, it looks like that the ring finger is also picked up by Bushy, by the way. That's something at least, but it looks like Josh actually miss, missed the stake skip here. I think, um, sometimes you don't turn around here. Your character actually falls back out of the stake range again. Oh, and yeah. And that's probably yeah. what happens. Oh, there we go. He gets the stake of America this time, uh, and should be able to go to that Bellum Church now to grab that other sacred tier. Stagger and here his second Christmas general is definitely faster. It's like um, Adef is currently running. I, I, I guess there's some combo here at least he can do. He can also work on the six unique staves if he's running towards Thops. There's a sacred tier here, but it's definitely a slower one to grab than the one Josh is usually going for. So I hope that he doesn't end up getting sniped here by trying to combine this a little bit too much of stuff like potential sorcery synergy or staff synergy. I don't think actually sorceries... Uh, oh, no, they, they are. There's sorceries and staffs, uh, staves, actually. So I hope he doesn't get distracted too much by the synergy play and loses the square in the meantime. Yeah, I, I, honestly, they could po Team Positive Vibes could bulldoze this diagonal still. Uh, no one's really yeah. done de Death Birds. No one's done Dragon Hearts. Uh, those are Limgrave bosses as well. And uh, Sacred Flask Plus tw 7 might be currently an Adef's pocket because he started on that way sooner than Josh did. Uh, so he should be ahead on that square, to be honest. This whole diagonal is looking really, really good uh, for Team Positive Vibes. Yeah, it looks like Josh might even have the same idea here. He's actually running towards Thops and try to combine the Sacred Tears with Sorceries and Staffs. But Adif is like very comfortably ahead on this entire line. So not only can he set up the potential diagonal threats, but also getting these potential other early game squares. Um... Looks like Bushy is probably committed to the, the finger now instead, as he's actually getting those Somber Stones. Yep, go on to go and upgrade that ringed finger to possibly plus nine. That'd be really, really good for, for them to get that weapon online. But it might be, in this case, honestly, for how rushable all these squares are, this might be one of those cases where you don't do that. Yeah. You know, where you don't time sink too much into upgrading a weapon because all these things you can get earlier on. You don't need a Sombra Knight necessarily for these, for these things. This is maybe a backfiring a little bit, uh, leaning too far into uh, focusing on upgrading. Yeah, you don't need the Sombra Knight for now unless it actually goes to this late game board state where you do suddenly have to be in, in the capital. I guess you don't need the Sombra Knight for that in particular, but it would actually help. Now, Chris was holding the Death Bird square here for a little bit. Is actually fully committing to it now. I honestly don't know how much I like the idea of uh, trying to combine the sacred... Um, tiers here especially for for josh i think adef is in a spot where he can do it he can try to gamble getting stuff like staffs uh and sorceries at the same time which there is this amazing synergy right like going towards celia you can pick up like two staffs for free then you can do the skip and you can get another sacred tier. there's like there's sorceries there it works out really well but i think if i'm threatened by this diagonal if i'm team joe w bush i just want to get these these tiers done and yeah Chris i don't know how close the getting tiers. Frost flamed here by that Deathrite bird, sadly not running south and instead running north. 
uh, gets tagged by the Trail of Fire and gets one shot there. Did do a lot of damage there. Those Holy Pots really put in a lot of work, but sadly needed one more stagger to really get that uh, the kill on the Deathrite Bird. Uh, but sadly, uh, I, I don't know, either misread the compass or really thought that he was not on the line of fire for that one. I, I think the, the point I just brought up could potentially really be tremendous here i don't know if uh, if adif is on six or uh, five sacred flasks but i think all that josh needs to do is grab this one here and then the one uh, in the other church here in weeping if he's able to take away that square from adif who's currently trying to also pick up staffs and sorceries i think that would actually be a pretty uh, i don't know if i could call it a misplay just because yes team positive vibes is in a good position to potentially combine all of these squares get the stuffs get the sorceries and i guess even if adev loses the sacred tsa he might at least win the stuffs and sorceries getting more squares on the board threatening an early win but uh, it's going to be really close here on that bottom right square Yep, uh, Adef getting tagged here in the City of Magic, uh, trying to, I believe, just, is he trying to get there? Or is he going to do maybe Salia Town Skip now to get to the Millicent Church? No, he is going to go for that um, that Staff of Loss. Uh, I think you are right here. This is going to be possibly the last church here for Josh in the Weeping I think it is, Peninsula. I think it is. And yeah, that might cost actually Adef the square, which really, really sucks for Team Positive Vibes. Yeah, I think because normally he grabs the Kaled one, but this time he grabbed the Thobs one instead. So he's about to grab the Grace here, sit down and get that square. Oh, no, he is porting back. Oh, no, up. he needs one more, okay? I'm surprised he even grabbed the Grace then, honestly. So maybe he, he didn't get the one at Thobs yet? Wait, I'm confused. I don't know, maybe. Yeah, he's making his way over to Thobs' church right now while uh, oh, okay. Adaf here is going for Branch Skip here. Can he do really close. Oh, he is... No, 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 quit out! Oh, he does not quit out in time. He just uh, can't believe how slippery that Branch is. And that might actually cost him that sacred tier square. Another stagger yeah, yeah. here on Chris, though, for the Death Rite Bird throws holy pots at, the, at its head at the good old Chrome Dome. Oh, there we go. Lags. Relax. There we go. Huge, huge damage coming out. And yeah, that's got to be super frustrating. I didn't actually see that uh, he only pre-prepped Thops, basically. There's no Grace nearby here, though. So is he going to get to... Because he still wants to actually kill Thops to get the bell bearing. This is a weird routing choice. Uh, he maybe should have done this first. I guess he didn't want to invest the time into killing Thops or buying sorceries here. Uh, I, I guess killing him is taking a little bit faster for the bell bearing and the staff at the same time. Uh, looks like he's going to be getting the square now, though. Yep. Very frustrated. Oh, that sucks so much because you really wanted to go for that staff and really try to go for a two-for-one deal. There is the Sacred Flask 7 now from Josh coming out, taking that square away. And that death, uh, going for that Celia Town Skip really did not help him either, sadly. Yeah, honestly, I don't know his staff count right now. I mean, I guess he isn't very leveled. But I almost like the idea of not doing the skip on a board like this because you can unlock things like Night Comet with the other torch. And you could even technically unlock the duo boss, which drops a staff, which isn't super, super squishy, but not tanky either. Uh, definitely, um, Celia Town Skip can be rough. It's really that last part of riding up that route where you sometimes just slip off. At least the stake is there. But unfortunate square to lose. I don't know how this race is going to continue, though, because Adev does have a decent amount of sorceries and scrolls and stuff set up, but so does Josh. I'm going to go ahead and move over to Team Joe W. Bush here real quick. Have them on the big screen for uh, quite a bit here as they are getting ready to get their weapons online. Now, they are currently uh, a bit behind here by three squares, um, but with their... Characters are being a bit more, uh, I would say, powerful in this regard. They should be able to catch up and start marking some squares for their own team. Yeah, so Bushy just upgraded the ring finger to plus 10. That's one powerful finger. Now, I'm really interested to see. I, I can't wait for the post-match already once he learns that there was also going to be a potential Alabaster Lord Sword. Because if I had the choice between those two, it would always be the Alabaster Lord Sword for me. It's actually ridiculous how much damage that charge that 2 does and how much poise damage it can deal for being quick and like using for some reason like no stamina. I'm pretty sure it's like bugged. Um, I don't think it should be like that. But uh, yeah, uh, at least has a weapon online now. Is probably working towards Radan and continuing his remembrance spree eventually. Yeah, I really wonder what they're aiming for here. Um... I mean, yeah, I think I think now that Bushy is set up, he's going to try to work towards Remembrances, what? God Bosses, Redan, Great Rune. Did you say that uh, Josh killed Tops, by the way, for the staff? 
Uh, I didn't see if he actually ended up killing him. He ended up getting that grace. I don't know if he returned to it. Okay, just because there is return tops uh, academy key. So if he did kill true, him, that would true. take him out of that whole quest line. Yeah, I don't think he's actually done it yet uh, as well. I think he rushed to the grace just to get that sacred um, um, flask square. And that could definitely be kind of annoying if that's something he has to do at one point. Especially now that he has a lake facing cliff grace. So he can actually return to that idea later if he wants to. If he isn't dead, I, I must I, I must have missed it if he did kill him. And yeah, this might be something that uh, Bushy is considering now, is that Restore Radon's Great Ruin into Godskin Apostle, potentially. Potentially, as he is currently at the Grace here next to the bridge, um, and has that uh, teleporter activated. Yeah, it could happen. And actually, you might be completely right here. He's heading towards the academy right now on Josh's end. Maybe he's trying to combine it all, getting the key back first into potentially then cashing out on the staffs. You can also grab some sorceries on the way there, going towards the academy. But I think that's something that Adif is going to be working on soon too. He's currently upgrading his morning star. Uh, picked up quite a bit of smithing weapons to plus 12. Not a bad choice. Yeah, no, I agree. Morningstar is actually a very solid smithing weapon. One of the better smithing weapons for sure. Uh, when it comes to the whole weapon pool. Um, so I definitely don't uh, think that is a bad choice at all. And uh, hopefully he can start maybe work, working on Dragonheart bosses. That, that would be something that Adif uh, definitely could pull off with the Morningstar. Uh, as he is currently in Limgrave. Although I do feel like that maybe that should still be Chris's job as he already has four bosses in Limgrave dead. Uh, that kind of plays into the whole Aguil uh, pickoff. Yeah, and I think Bushy's about to ruin my day by riding to the Altus Plateau Godskin Apostle. It is what it is. If it's just about that single square, obviously this will always be the correct play. It's just faster to reach. You don't have to do Redan first. That's why I'm saying it's, it's, it's such a rare play because this one is so available. Actually checking the merchant here once again because he's once... Actually, maybe he still turns around because he buys this book. I forgot about this. For the Lightning Pot Mimic Tear Strat. Uh, he's going to be teleporting at this point because at this point it's probably also just faster to reach this Godzilla Apostle if you're already up here. Yeah, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. Okay, it looks like that Adef uh, is going for the pumpkin head here, by the way, in Limgrave. Po maybe they're going to be trying and that having him focus right. on Limgrave bosses uh, while Chris goes for more of the later game stuff. Maybe going for Godskin Noble into Rikert here for the four god bosses. Um, it's also unlocked Selen, right? So he's right, probably going right. to continue his like, sorcery spree. True. One thing I do find interesting, though, is that he didn't pick up the Alabaster's Lord Sword. He, he, I'm assuming Chris told him about that. And yeah, since, he must know, yeah. And since Adif already invested 30 intelligence into his own stat, why does he not use that as you need at least 18 intelligence to wield it perfectly with you know strength and, and dex on top of that? I'm just a little I'm just a little thrown off by that. Maybe he just didn't have enough money to wield it. I think that's it because he actually... Yeah, yeah. He, he got all of the money from the Halic Tree to actually buy the crap and then use the money for the intelligence requirements. So I guess because his plan is going to be to stick with the early game stuff, he didn't want to invest more money into that sword and instead just going to use the plus 12 morning star to work on collecting early game stuff and maybe killing early game bosses like some of the easier dragon bosses you've said or maybe the easier earth tree avatars. And we have a nice Scott's got a apostle here from Bushy right now on the ringed finger. Should get a stagger here soon, as those two charged R twos should be almost enough to knock him out. As you can see, he's he's just tagging them real quick because he's just trying to get that stagger off, and there it is. Finally, gets the repost. Interesting. So Chris preparing uh, a Rykard Godskin Noble play in Volcano Manor there, which is definitely a nice combination of two God bosses. But I think. Um, Bushy might have the upper hand on that square if he doesn't greet with it too much. Because he can kill the Apostle here, he can kill Rick, Godfroy, and uh, Godric, obviously. Which overall will probably be slightly faster than trying to combine those Volcano Mana bosses. Um, given that he already has killed Margit with the parries. There it is. Nice God's gonna possible fight uh, coming out here from Bushy. Claiming that four square now for Team Joe W. Bush. Um... Yeah, I, I'm trying to figure out... Honestly, maybe this is really kind of a nice little pivot play, I guess. Uh, losing that Sacred Flask uh, 7 from Adif uh, was sadly pretty detrimental to that diagonal. But I think that's why they're ditching the Limgrave bosses and Dragonhearts and maybe focusing on row 2. 
And ADF yeah. going for the staves while Chris goes for god bosses into capital access, maybe with Moog sewers. Um, that could be some, you know, because you need capital access for that. And going into Rikard with that, uh, that might be the play that he needs to get this bingo offline or online. Sorry. And I ADF decided to kill Thobbs here. So he's going to be opting out of the Thobbs Academy uh, square, which Josh is probably going to be able to get. He's already fighting Red Wolf. is going to be running over to the Academy key shortly from here. Uh, but that will probably cause him to lose the staves and sorcery square um, as yeah. a trade-off. Yeah. Um, and it was here, actually, Bushy going straight for Radon afterwards after going for Godskin Apostle, maybe trying to promote that column three for his team, going for the Restore Radon's Great Rune right afterwards. Um, or at the very least, just activating this fight, getting this fight done with, so he at least has one Remembrance uh, or Great Rune boss for, for capital access. And then going for maybe a Topps Academy key first. Um, at the, just at the very least, kind of like opening up the map for himself a little bit more, you know? Yeah, exactly. He should be able to um, blast for Radan here fairly easily with a plus 10 weapon. Doesn't really have any status effects, but just the raw damage should be pretty good. Radan, I think, has the highest stance in the game of like 200. Also, I'm not exactly sure why Adef is killing this boss. I, th I thought the demi human staff is just next to it, or you actually have to kill the no, boss? No, you have to kill, to you have to kill uh, okay, the okay. demi human to get that staff. And there it is. Oh, marks the six staves now. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and bring it to the four player screen to get uh, some of these fights on for uh, everyone to see the Godskin Noble fight, but also the Radon fight here from Bushy, uh, as we have what seems to be Josh going for the Academy key here, and Raya Lucaria, by the way. Yeah, so, killing that guy is important. He will literally snipe you over the ladder. So this will actually come down to Moog Sewers, because as we see here, I'm going to move to the team uh, screen here real quick, just so you guys can see that, uh, uh, you know, Team Paza Vibes is focusing on God Bosses and Moog Sewers potentially here for this Road to Bingo. But then for uh, Team Joe W. Bush, they're getting a Tops Academy key. They're getting Restorodon's Great Rune. They only have Dragonheart Bosses and Moog Sewers as well. So this might be a whole Moog Sewers race at the end of the day, seeing who can get that bingo line first. Yeah, so Radan obviously does give you capital access. That's what it's kind of working towards. And it gives you the potential to restore his Great Rune later. But I think there is a chance that Chris will eventually pull a head here now on the god bosses. Bushy is currently, quote-unquote, wasting his time on that square completion. By fighting Radan, that's not going to really help him in that regard. Uh, while Chris has killed one god boss there, it's going to be going to Raikal, which is going to give him capital access and a god boss at the same time. So I wonder how that's going to play out, who's actually going to be able to, to claim that square. Rikard being uh, a god boss as he's the god devouring serpent in phase one does transition later to the lord of blasphemy and that also means you do actually have to kill both phases to get that to count uh, but again Chris wants to do this anyway in order to uh, enter the capital yeah very nice noble fight from Chris for sure uh Especially for for considering like past seasons where there's been incidences on nobles, that was very 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 clean. Um, and hopefully he has the same clean fight here for Riker as well. He is very well versed in the whole Riker fight though, um, so he should be uh, good to go on that. Um, that would be a really really nice progression towards those four god bosses. And Urchri Avatar is now coming up from Adef gets turned into a pancake in the middle of weeping. Um, Looks maybe like Josh game crash potentially on the other half. Oh. Currently on the desktop. Yeah, not too sure. Not too sure. It is loading back in, though. Yeah, it shouldn't be the end of the world. I do think he's working on something completely different at this time. Uh, like I said, Adev working on those early game squares with this morning star. So they're going to be able to do decent damage to these trees. There's actually some tech that I want to see people do more. And it actually matters quite a bit. Right at the grace at the Road of Inquity, there's three drawstring fire grease. And yes, they are not like super long lasting. But for these bosses, it actually makes quite a bit of difference. Yeah. Um, as a like 200%, as a, as a take essentially double damage from fire. Um, I wonder what Bushy's foresight is going to be here on this god play. He, lo he looks to be heading towards Radan's great rune, potentially restoration, which yep. I find interesting um, because I don't know how well aware they are of this row two threat. Maybe they're not currently looking at it too much, but I feel like it's very, very scary 
maybe he feels too comfortable with his god boss progression but uh, i was gonna say he at least has the lead into the capital because he can just kill godric now and then be on his way there to potentially block it by using moke i guess he wants to eventually block it with god bosses all he needs to do for that is kill godfroy godric and rick which are fairly fast in his position and there it is, by the way, claiming the top ski here from Josh, kind of activating that column three that we were talking about. But also, I mean, for Bushy, where Starboard Down's Great Rune, he can still do the Agatskin Apostle on the tower. That's another god boss. So maybe he's thinking about that, you know, twofer still, but just in a different way to maybe still work towards that god boss after getting the restoration, you know? Yeah, I, I feel like it's prob... I mean, he is at plus 10, but I feel like it's probably going to be too tanky regardless, just with the... Comp I mean, I guess Goldfroy is also kind of tanky and a little bit further away, so maybe he... I think on paper it might be faster than Goldfroy, and then he just goes for Godric and Soldier of Godric. Could be, could be interesting. I do, I do like this play, though, here, though, uh, from Team Positive Vibes, where, where Chris now is pretty much the sole contributor to uh, Row 2 as he's going to be doing God Bosses into Moog Sewers. And Adif is like, all right, let me, go, let me go make some more threats. Let me go do Urtree Avatars right now, Urtree Avatars 3, to really promote that Column 1, just in case they do get Moog Sewers. Just in case they do get something else, let me go ahead and activate some more lines for us. Create some more pressure. I think that's a great, great play. Yeah, I think for that one in particular... Uh, Bushy definitely has a great opportunity to block it fairly fast. He already acquired the uh, lightning pot recipe. He has Radan killed, so he can at least get that Mimic tier consumable only kill super fast if he feels like that's a big threat. Rykard getting absolutely destroyed by the Serpent Hunter. Um, Chris not able to set up the stun lock there as he's not stomping with his foot, but already doing so much damage to him simply just by jump attacking and using that weapon art. It's pretty healthy as well. One more jump or two will do it. Getting once again another god boss on the board. It's currently a two. He just marked that for us, which is nice to see. Now, Josh actually pivoting to Urtree Avatars here is interesting because Adef, despite a death he took again there, should definitely have the upper hand. Is already fighting the ruined labyrinth one. Yeah, I believe this is his second uh, Urtree Avatar. So uh, once he's got this one done, only one more should do it, and then he's going to have that square uh, for his team. And we are currently what seems to be 7-5 to five right now for Team Positive Vibes. And Chris running straight to Godra, get that capital access after Rikard, and then maybe move into uh, capital after Soldier of Godric for that fourth one. Yeah, that God Square is really interesting to me. I feel like um, at this point you want to do something about row two and not just let them have it. In fact, if they get that row, um, they would be at nine, eleven points. And if the, all that Adef needs to do, oh, but he dies to that Urtree Avatar, and Josh is on the second Urtree Avatar as well. They are both extremely low on health. If Josh is able to snipe that square away, that could be extremely frustrating. Yeah, these trees can definitely be the root of all your problems if you don't know this fight very well. And uh, as you can see, this Ooh. might be something that could uh, really cost eight of the square. Damage output looking quite a bit better there. Um, these trees, I believe, cannot bleed, which does make some sense. Um, so the star, the morning star, whatever, not doing too much work here compared to just raw damage coming out of uh, Josh's uh, finger. Gotta be a little careful here. I feel like that golden lamb was just a little too close to that horse. I'm not gonna lie. One of those can definitely deal a lot of damage, possibly even one shot Josh at that health bar, uh, including I mean Adef in this uh, case as well. Uh, getting that nice repose here. That is uh, Josh's second Earth Tree Avatar. Now going to be going towards the last one, which is the Physic Flask one. Or the, sorry, not the Physic Flask one. The uh, the Explosive Physic tier one. Uh, so this might actually be a snipe from Josh. Yeah, I feel like it's going to be. I don't know how well um, Adef has progressed in Lyonia yeah, when it comes to that part of the map. Now, Bushy pivoting towards Dragonheart bosses. I don't know if they're planning to set up their own threats around Row 2. Doesn't seem extremely fast. I'm, I'm just very confused how much they are ignoring Row 2. Because Chris is working on Godric now. It's going to be his third god boss. He just has to kill Soldier of Godric. He has capital access already. And I don't think oh, also actually dying to a guild they're being stuck under that ledge, taking lots of fire damage. I don't know if Bushy has done Godric yet. I don't think so, right? I think he's only done Radan as his only great rune boss. Uh, yes. He stopped off the market, yeah. yeah. Which means that Chris is going to have the advantage in any single way, therefore, row two. As soon as he's killed Godric. In terms of god bosses and in terms of uh, capital access. 
Uh, this is definitely looking a little tough here for ADEF, going for his possibly uh, third Urtree Avatar. However, Josh already almost at the Urtree Avatar. ADEF should really uh, you know, consider branching out and moving into a different direction on the board, possibly going for uh, setting up a different weapon, maybe going for some Nora stats. I'm not sure. Yeah, I don't know if he knows that he is obviously being um, raced right now. Josh is running to that last Urtree Avatar. Um, I guess because he hasn't marked much in too long, um, in, in a long, longer time, he could start to suspect that this is something that's going on. Uh, we'll see how well Josh does, does on this fight. If he was to take a death, there is still a potential of comeback, but doing lots of damage here. Yeah, this, this column three, though, is looking more and more promising for uh, Team Joe W. Bush as well. As... Uh... Uh, Bushy is making his way towards Smarag, I believe, for his second dragon. And uh, that will definitely start to uh, pay off for them as Moog Sewers becomes uh, a point of interest for both teams. Very true, but Chris is definitely working towards denying every single thing at the, on the board at the same time. He has a second remembrance right now. He is going to be entering the capital soon, might even kill Morgoth at one point to potentially restore his great rune. Going to be heading towards Moog in the sewers. He definitely is controlling the match a lot there on the positive vibes side. And there we go. The tree race is won by Josh here, claiming that Urtree Avatar is square. And uh, yeah. That's a huge block for sure. This could possibly promote into a row three here for Joe W. Bush uh, once uh, Bushy does get this Dragonheart boss online. Yeah, but honestly, just looking at Chris right now, he's going to be able to claim that God boss square yep. and instead going to be headed towards the capital where he can do he can access uh, Moog. He can work towards getting his like four remembrances. He can really, really um, work on controlling the match here. Uh, very soon. I, I'm I'm just surprised that t I don't know what the game plan is here yeah, from Joe W. Bush. Uh, Bush is still working on tree bo and on Dragonheart bosses right now. Is going to be committing to it fully by teleporting towards the magma worm here. So he really wants to get that square on the board. But I I think unless something goes really wa wrong, that this road two bingo, if they want it, is basically guaranteed. Yeah, I'm not I'm not uh, I'm not too sure how this is going to go. Uh, what's also really nice, uh, okay, I guess, I guess Adef here is currently in, uh, Ordina, by the way, to grab some money. Um, for Chris, what's also huge is that, yeah, he, he has Godric, he's got Rikert, so he already has two remembrances. So getting the other remembrances beyond that is going to be extremely easy for him. So that's going to be a nice road three block at the very least. And yeah, he, him having priority on Moog Stewards, I really hope he commits to that and doesn't hold on to that. That's the, that's the big, big deal here is... Does he just fully commit? Does he full send it? Just do the line, you know, don't, uh, you know, try to, like, be fancy with it and try to do any mind games. Uh, there it is. There's the four bosses claimed by by uh, by Chris. So now Moog Stewards is going to be a big deal here. Yeah, I think he has to. I'm honestly kind of surprised, by the way, that the 12 Sorcery Square is still open. I know that Adif was definitely working on this quite intensely at one point. Um, well, I guess he was mostly, mostly working on stuffs, but he has that Selen Grace... With the um, oh wait, was that maybe Josh? Actually, I think Josh may have been at the pumpkin head uh, at one point. If he gets that square, and uh, it would push them to nine points, right? Then I feel like I'm I'm actually surprised that Chris is going for the TBM Mariners here. I know it's a big time investment to do this, right? But if he enters the capital and kills Moog, he can also kill Morgoth, set up his fourth remembrance, and then they have enough squares to actually win the match. There it is. Uh, claims eight Limgrave bosses. That's why he grabbed the Tibet Mariner just real right, quick right. just to grab that. Honestly, that is not a bad idea. You might just get that extra square on the board. Now if he goes for capital, he'll have 12 points if he gets Moog Sewers first. So all ADF needs to do now is just get one more square on the board for the team. And this would be possibly uh, Team Positive Vibes' first win. Yeah, and I feel like he has to be somewhat close to the potential sorcery grab. Might actually do Tibia, Tibia Mariners instead. This is a tanky one to try if that's his plan. Maybe he's just going to dodge him and actually go for more money. He actually might be doing this as he's taking care of the snails, which I don't, I guess, might work out for them. I, I'm just surprised because he has Thobbs killed. I think I saw him pick up a, sc a scroll earlier. Uh, 12 sorceries at this point seems fairly fast to grab. But uh, if he can make it through these Mariners, especially this one, as he's the tankiest one, I, I guess he's set up to do that as well. Yeah, this will be a little fun to watch as uh, 
some of the Dude. giants can be a little annoying to deal with, especially in this really small sl slope. Uh, okay. I'm surprised there's no Sacred Blade on this Morningstar, by the way. He's just going in it. Honestly, the damage isn't too bad. He's already like a, a quarter of the way through the health bar. It's really not too shabby. So it does. It's going to take him a little bit, but at the very least, I don't think this Tibet Mariner actually summons um, any helpers besides the the giant skeletons, which is right yeah. now not even happening. So if he's lucky, he can stagger them out of those attacks. There's the Dragonheart bosses right now, by the way, for uh, Team Joe W. Bush, really showing that column three, being like, "Yo, we wanted Moog sewers as well," but Chris is already on the way. Chris is already halfway towards the capital now. Well, she hasn't even killed Godric, which is still what I'm so confused about, that that's something that, that he had God's boss priority at one point. He must have just not uh, taken a threat too seriously. Uh, I, I mean, I guess I guess there was no real sign that they were going for God bosses, as uh, Chris kind of did it a little bit sneakily. He went to, like, um, Volcano Manor, which didn't really give anything away, getting two god bosses. In fact, yeah, that's actually a good point now that I think about it more. I guess he's never really shown that that's something he was working on. Uh, and then suddenly, just out of nowhere, boom, four god bosses. Maybe uh, Bushy thought by marking that god's gonna apostle and market square that he has, had shown his priority on that square, so he wasn't worried about it. But now the god's square is on, and Chris is on his way to actually kill Suamog. The only issue here is that, like I said, Adef needs to get one more square for the team. Honestly, if anything, Chris can go for Sewer Moog straight into Morgoth's Great Rune. Yeah, I, I think you already mentioned that, though. But like at the yeah. very least, that's the last square that they could go for. So if Adef is not able to get this Tibet Mariner square, Chris still has advantage on Morgoth's Great Rune. As Josh is currently on Tibet Mariners, and I think might be... Uh, this, I don't know if this is his first one or if it's his second one, but he does die, actually. Ah. This is actually maybe the time that Adef needs to get this uh, Tibet Mariner square himself. I'm I'm still surprised that that's the one uh, he's choosing. I feel like if you just run around the map a little bit, you have 12 sorceries. Maybe he didn't have enough money available to buy the ones from Selen. Like maybe he's already looted all of the uh, big money uh, points in the game. You know, I, he went to the Helic Tree for his intelligence dump. He went to Ordina at one point. Um, so maybe that wasn't available to him anymore. But I feel like, yeah, with Celia being so close, with uh, Selen being so fast, uh, the scrolls being so fast, having Thops killed and his bell bearing, which gives you three sorceries, even getting a sorcery earlier from the demi human, I feel like that would be so fast to do. But he's on his way now to the next Tibia Mariner. I'm not exactly sure how strong Chris's uh, Alabaster's Lord Sword is, but it doesn't seem super strong. Maybe a plus four. Yeah, um, that's what I would expect. But uh, I think a plus nine would definitely be a little helpful here. But he is so far in the lead, it doesn't really matter. As Bushy, however, is melting Godric with, with his finger. Gets a nice stagger, going to be moving into phase two here. Yeah, I will say, if Moog is going to be the one that it comes down to, that might actually matter a little bit. Yes, the good thing about this weapon is that you can almost stagger lock enemies with how much poise damage you're doing. That's not super nice against the Draconic Tree <clears throat> Sentinel, as you don't get a repost. But Moog Sewers, I mentioned yesterday, he has like 14,000 HP. With a weapon like this, it will take a long time to actually kill him. Definitely doable, um, but uh, we'll see if, if there's any world in which Bushy, who's now basically earned capital access, can actually get in there and maybe win based off damage. But Chris's lead on that square is obviously tremendous. All right, I'm going to move over to the other team here real quick, see what they're up to besides the Tibet Mariner. What is Bushy going to do next? I'm assuming he's going to be rushing capital, and he is going straight towards the Battlegrounds Grace uh, and Landell Capital here, or moving into Landell Capital. That is going to be uh, Adif's second Tibet Mariner, by the way, so he needs one more. I believe this might be actually good for Adif here, um, as Josh is still currently on his second one. Yeah, I think he must have died again, looking at the HP bar, uh, while we were focused on the capital and remembrance race. Uh, Adif is looking to go to the Leonia one instead of the Altus one. Definitely a little bit more riding, but much, much, much less scary. No big skeletons being spawned there, only small ones and a much lower HP pool. Definitely takes a bit to get there, though, so hopefully you can get there in time and then mark that square. That's all he really needs to do for Chris to clutch out the match. What yeah. he needs to do now is reach the sewers, kill Moog, and they're going to get that bingo, which is three points, one from the square and then two from the line. Very nice capital skip uh, coming out here from Chris, doing a little bit of uh, gliding down the side, Prince of, Prince of Persia style. 
getting to the rooftop here, dropping down. And here it is, third Tibia Mariner now for uh, Josh. I wonder if this one is... I feel like this one isn't as tanky as the Altus one. Am I Am I crazy? Or maybe just as tanky? It's not as strong as I thought it was, I guess. That's probably the best way I could put it. Josh over really low here. He's got to be a little careful. That snail... Oh, no way! The snail's little ghosty boy tags Josh! There's no way... And Adev is about to reach his third Tibia Mariner here in Leonia. I think this guy in the mountains has like a thousand HP more than Altus, so it's like pretty equal. Barely a big difference. Uh, Adev is about to ride over. This is a guy that just surfs on the ground. That might be just enough time that Adef needs to get this Tibia Mariner uh, before Josh gets his. Oh, Lord. Boshi now on DTS here, but Chris is already jumping down into the sewers. He is at least uh, five minutes ahead. I don't really see a world in which uh, Josh can kill the Sibirian Mariner in time. Uh, Adif is now blasting through it. The only way he can possibly throw the square, obviously he doesn't know this, so he's still going to play more aggressive, but the only way he can throw this at this point is if he dies to any of the skeletons or any of the AoE attacks. Does get tagged there once by the horn. One skull is being summoned. All he needs to do now is one hit, and he's going to be able to is. claim the square. That is going to be super important. There it is. There it is. There is the Tibia Mariners for Adef now. All he has to do now is sit back, get a nice mimosa, and watch Chris do the work, which is going to be doing uh, Moog Sewers. That will give them the bingo. That will give them the victory. Team Positive Vibes currently locked and loaded for their first dub of the season. Yeah, and I think the good thing is that Chris, uh, sorry, Adef can actually still work on sorceries at the same time. He knows that at least one player is going to have to try and contest Chris on this march to the bingo row two. So the sorceries are still something he can work on. I don't know if that's what he's planning on doing. There's not too much left on the board other than that. Um, in fact, it's pretty much the only viable square unless he wants to go for one of those hero graves, which isn't actually the worst idea. Those are not super slow. Damn, Just in case Chris isn't able to secure this bingo. Not too sure, not too sure. Josh here now grabbing his money as that is 40,000 dollars and then quitting out here so he can possibly go for a different square not yeah not sure exactly what uh maybe yeah hero's grave is probably best yeah i think he's doing sorceries now he just marked the muriel uh he, he got the muriel grace he's probably going to be talking to him potentially buying some sorceries there i don't know how close he is to 12 but that's definitely going to be his backup plan in case stuff goes wrong but that being said Chris is sitting on like 40 Vigor. Weapon not super leveled up, but Moog is definitely fine. Like this version at least doesn't have all of the Blood Flame stuff. So if he gets the skip here, which is probably another thing he's going to be going for, he can probably just stagger lock him into a win. Yeah, let me go ahead and see this skip here from Chris. Is it as clean as it was from CBD the other day? Uh, he is going for a bit of a different angle here, but hopefully yeah, that is good enough. Oh, very wow. nice smooth drop down. There it is. First try. Wait, that's so, much better. <laughs> that's so much better than the spot I do, where you just drop down directly. It's probably harder, um, as you have to maybe turn around with a jump, but that's certainly going to be something that I'm going to try to steal. Now, um, probably going to grab the Grace here, unless he's... I mean, I've seen Chris not get Graces, where I was like, man, like in randomizer gra uh, races, he'll just skip the, beside the Great Bridge Grace, not knowing what the Malekith boss is. But in this specific spot, I don't think you do that. He's able to get the intelligence requirement online, getting 10% extra magic damage on the weapon, which is going to be kind of nice for this fight. Plus six, by the way. Yeah. Uh, and it looks like Josh now going for sorceries. He has the money. He has the money. Um, does he have the books, though, is the question. Yeah, I think I may ha have seen him head to... I mean, he definitely interacted with Thobbs at one point as he gave him the key, potentially bought some there. If not, he has the grace. Um, and I think I either saw Adef or him actually head towards one of those scrolls. It looks like Adef might be going towards that Newman's ruin just past the Pest Threads Church here. Uh, definitely send the elevator back down because this place can be very, very scary if you get hit here and tag Benny of the Pest Threads. Uh, actually, in fact, we might have missed it because there's already ruins sitting on the ground. Yeah, yeah, you can definitely die quick. Bushy almost on his way to Moog Sewers as well. Going to be dropping down. Going to be grabbing that grace. Going to have to go through all of the pipes first. 
and then should be able to do this boss fight as well and once he does the elevator skip but chris is already over halfway done with this moog super fight this is looking very very good here look at the health bar by the way on chris as well this is definitely looking like a dub for team positive vibes yeah, nice roll on that stab attack is going to be strafing the blood, blood flames or dodging them. Putting in good damage there with this plus six sword. Just got the intelligence requirement online, so dealing even extra magic damage. Gets another stagger there, and like you said, this helper nice is looking good. Another charge or two there. Going to be going for the repose, and I think this is going to be the win. One more attack here is going to secure them the bingo into a win. Yeah, there it is. He is dead. There is the bingo. 13 to 8. There it is for positive vibes. Getting a dubski. Quick little pop off. Let's go. G G's. Yeah, well played by Team Positive Vibes. Um, very, very curious to see um, that priority. I mean, honestly, this is going to be my prediction in the post-game interview. I feel like Bushy probably felt confident with him showing Margit and God's Gonna Apostle. He was like, there's no way Chris goes for God bosses. I have that priority. I can, they will see that, right? Like, I have the God's Gonna Apostle. I have Margit. I can do, do Godric. They wouldn't go for God bosses. But Chris decides to do so anyway, sees that potential there for row two, and it pays out. Yeah, very, very nice. This this really, really paid off for Team Positive Vibes. Also, just like letting ADF just rush early stuff. Chris, yeah. allowing Chris to just go for like a bit more of a setup while uh, just having ADF just full on just rush everything that doesn't have to do with stat requirements. Just be like, okay, go stat dump thirty int. Go do sacred flat. Uh, go do sacred flasks. Go, you know, go do uh, twenty bold crabs. All the really, really fast stuff. Just go ahead. Just get it out of the way as fast as you can. And that really, really paid off for them. There was so much pressure that was building up from all, all those early, uh, early game squares. Definitely well done. All uh, right. Close match. They do seem to be ready here. I'm gonna pull in all the players. Uh, and welcome in, welcome in, GG's, the Team Positive Vibes, grabbing your first dub of the season. How does it feel, first of all? Very good. GG's, guys. It feels GGs, good. guys. It's, it's good. Yeah. GG's. Uh, GGs. Um, nice, nice vibes, guys. <laughs> nice vibes. Yeah. <laughs> Overall, I do have to say... Uh, there was a, a a lot of early game rushing. I think the game plan that you guys had uh, for so Team Positive Vibes, the game plan you had, uh, worked out uh, of having just AF just rush all of the early game stuff as, as fast as he can and having Chris kind of like focus on very specific squares to really prioritize as much pressure as you can on the board. Um, was row two always in your sights or was there the diagonal first that got taken away from Sacred Flasks? What was the, the whole overall game plan? We we were yeah. definitely targeting the diagonal initially, mm -hmm. yeah. And I was like, I was gonna go to Dragon Hearts at some some point, but uh, it, it never it was never really a clean time for me to go do it. And when I did, um, like when I was getting God bosses and Adep was getting stabs, then I'm like, okay, well that just leaves Surmog. Then I can just go and get there. I know I'm ahead on remembrances from doing, um, like Rykard and Godric, mm -hmm. and so I can get to Surmog before them, and then. And like it's not worth it to go kill Dragonheart bosses. And when I saw Bushy do Dragonheart boss, I'm like, okay, I definitely have time. I can be careful with this, and we got it. So, but yeah, at the start, um... there were honestly there were a lot of rows. I think probably both teams saw that there's just like a ton of row synergy and like, oh yeah, not necessarily synergy per se, but like a lot of very quick goals in a lot of consolidated rows. Like column one is really pretty quick. Um, I felt like row five is decently fast as well um and then both diagonals are pretty solid so like there was a lot of variability yeah. and i think the difficulty was just coming up with like okay as the game state progresses what row is most viable yeah yeah um and i'm assuming i mean from uh from team jojo to bush's side you guys there was no real showing that chris was progressing the god bosses at all exactly yeah yeah i mean that, that was the that was a surprise to the game for us mm -hmm. I, yeah, I early can... on went to get uh the godskin apostle square with the idea I, I had no intention of going for god bosses like anytime soon idea j being just like show the priority and mm -hmm. discourage those guys from going for god bosses so um when i was going for dragon heart bosses and chris marked the god bosses it, it kind of caught me by surprise and it was at that point that i realized like oh I'm behind on Moog. I have to go for it, but yeah, 
if if we lose that square, we lose the game. Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah when, I, when I was setting up a, a plus six alabaster with like grabbing the sleep pots to go to God's Gun Apostle, and then you marked it. I'm like, okay, well, I think I can still get God bosses first, and that will also give me like remembrance bosses and limb grave bosses to like just get an extra square. But then when, oh. when you marked Radon's Great Rune, it was like, oh, they're not going for god bosses. That was oh, like, yeah, at least not true, like yeah. right right then, and so I, yeah. I knew I had I had time on that. So, did you get that from the great sword chest, the Alabaster Lord yeah. sword? Yeah. Because yeah. I was kind of surprised. Mm. Oh. Um, I, I was going to say I saw <laughs> Team so Jordan Bush kind of like scatter around for weapons. Yeah. Um, and they ended up using a pretty strong ringed finger there at the end, but I guess that one went uh, like under the radar. Yeah, ringed yeah. fingers. It, hammer class weapons are good, but ringed finger isn't like too great. Yeah, it's just a somber hammer. Somber yeah, hammer. Yeah, yeah. Which is like <laughs> acceptable. Yeah. Yeah, we were thinking this was a bad weapon seed, and I, I thought I was pretty convinced for the whole game I had a plus 10 ringed finger. I was pretty convinced for the whole game that I must have a weapon advantage, but apparently not. Josh, match, did guys. you, uh, were you yeah, going geez. for Tibia Mariners at the end? Yep. 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 Okay. That was a snipe. You got me. You got me on Nerd Tree Avatars and Sacred Flasks. So it's uh, relatively uh, even, I think. <laughs> well, you know. GG's. Nice trades, boys. Yeah. Nice trades, boys. Yeah. yeah GG's. Uh, yeah, uh, Josh would have uh, got, actually gotten it before Adef, but sadly got uh, tagged by a snail at the last one at yeah. Mount Tops. Yeah, I died. It, uh, uh, yeah. Threw out uh, a little ghosty boy and, and tagged him while he was. Trying to heal. Well, like the snail, the snail killing event. killing the snails is is crucial before Apparently fighting that so, guy. Yeah, yeah. Oh, no gosh. lie, I I actually just forgot to level vigor on this. Uh, Dude, on this low match. key, me too. <laughs> like, like I looked at my stat. I died to Urgy avatars like five times. So I was like, oh, my vig is at ten. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Same. Pretty much. How much progress did you have towards sorceries? Uh, I was about to pick up like my sixth. Uh, sorry, uh, sorry. When you were when you marked Tibia Mariners. Oh, zero. I okay. had books, like I had scrolls, and I had the Grace at Selen. Um, you would have beaten me there then for sure. But I elected to kill Topes for the staff to get that goal as fast as possible. So it would have been slightly uh, slower. Okay. Um, but yeah, I had some decent progress, I would say. Because our other idea was give row two and counter with row three mm. the only issue we were having with that was we we were suspecting that instead of you going for tibia mariners you would have been going for sorceries so we kind of like threw that idea out the window because like ah they're they're already going to reach 13 if they just get sorceries in row two yeah i when i saw row three open i i just thought that sorceries was a bad play like more, better to block than to to try to block at least yeah. yeah. Was there ever uh, uh, from uh, Bushy in this case because you had capital access? So let's say, for example, Chris would have gotten Moog sewers, but uh, that uh, Josh would have gotten Tibia Mariners. So that road three was available, and there would be twelve to eight. Would you then commit to the Morgoth's Great Rune to make sure that Chris doesn't get that as his last yeah. swear, or would you possibly go for uh, the row three commit instead with Josh to try and see if you can get, finish that instead? Like, what would the I game mean, plan be then? All it's all guessing at that point you you'd need to snipe like yeah in in that hypothetical we would have tibia mariners and i would have two out of four remembrances i would be racing chris to I mean, we'd probably be going rune. for both like bushy yeah. would be going for the morgoth's great rune i would be going for the the other stuff so well it, it's a guess between it's a gamble between remembrances and morgoth's great rune i need Pretty to do much. what chris is doing i yeah. just need to do it faster than him Right. Yeah, Bingo right. is yeah. like all about these conditional statements where like, okay, well, if Josh gets Tibia Mariners, I'm doing Altus. Or if Josh doesn't get it, I do Sorceries. Like, there's so many possible forks that are just complete guesses. Yeah. Lots of layers. Yeah. Yeah. Which is super understandable. But, uh, yeah, uh, amazing game, guys. It was really, really fun to watch. It was really cool to see that two Bingo Lions kind of met at one square, which is Moog Sewers. So that was really, really exciting to see. Um and yeah, congrats again to Team Paza Vibes for for getting your your, your victory uh for the Thank for you. uh the first of the season and um you know that also doesn't mean that you're out of top three just yet you know uh Lim did some uh, math right before the day started and he had noticed that uh, you know if some matches go some ways you know you still have a chance of getting top three so that'd be that'd be really cool to see if that uh, actually happens but uh, yeah thank you so much for playing guys. I don't think that's actually true for those guys because they're yeah. facing 
they're facing Aggie and CBD next week. It was technically possible for us because we're facing Cat and Pup. Um, and it would give us a win over what would be a three-way tie. Um, oh, yeah, I haven't done the math for the tiebreaker just for, like, the overall scores. That makes sense. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, well, fun fact, yeah. next Saturday's match is actually worth, worth uh, four points. So if we just win that, <laughs> we're going to be, be fine. Oh, actually. I forgot about the, the fifth yeah. match. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but yeah, thanks so much for playing, guys. Really do appreciate it. Best of luck to you yeah. guys next week for thanks your for your final match GGs, for your, uh, your round five. And uh, hope you guys have a good rest of your Sunday. GG's. Thank you, you too. Yep, GG's, guys. Hey, GG's. GG's. GGs.